Hi, it's me, Johanna, and welcome back. Today we're going to do Chapter 5, which is all about operations, but specifically 5.1 and 5.2. So 5.1 is about the role of operations management. So if you recall the model of a business, which was the input, then add value and output, you will know that operations is part of the add value. So essentially, operations is the production of a service or a product or a good that adds value to the business. So in the supply chain, you go from the raw material to the final product. And as the manager of this, you have to communicate with suppliers, you have to communicate with the employees, all of that stuff. So that is how operation management works. You manage the supply chain, you manage the employees creating your products, you manage that the products are actually coming out the way they're supposed to, all of that stuff. So how does operations management relate to the other functions of a business? So HR, everything you do in operations management is done by people. People, workers, employees, again, don't call them people, but in the book they did. Um, these employees are the people doing, making the product, doing the service, whatever the case is. So it is connected to HR. It's connected to finance because you need funding to create these products. It's related to marketing because these products need to put, be put at an appropriate price and they needed to be marketed in an appropriate way to have it be successful. If you're not able to market, then your product and all that money you use to make your product would go to waste. So as well as everything I said before, operations management goes one step further because they have to ensure that all three of these aspects are done properly. So you have to think about sustainability, that being the economic sustainability, the social sustainability, and the ecological sustainability of the company. Nowadays, people are way more aware about ethics and movements and different issues that are big. So you have to treat your workers right, make sure they have the right salary, make sure that they are not being abused, stuff like that, to make sure that your company will continue to to thrive in a social environment because your customers will stop buying from you if you mistreat your workers. Now, economically, you have to respect the budget you have been given and make sure that your production is not costing over the budget and amounts that you cannot pay off. Ecological sustainability is the fact that now people are starting to realize that their business and their factories and productions may be negatively infecting impacting the environment and that it is important to minimize that impact as much as possible. So now we're moving on to 5.2 which is about production methods. So there are four different production methods that will be discussed. They are job production also called customized production, there is batch production, there is mass production which might also be called flow production or process production or line production any of those names, they don't mean the exact same thing, but they mean, they're like, mass production is an umbrella term, and the other ones are like more specific. And then there's cellular production. So let's talk about job production and the advantages and disadvantages of job production. So job production is essentially where you make specific, single, one-off items that are customized towards each and every customer. This form of production is often associated with high quality products. So some advantages are that you have high add value, you need high levels of worker motivation, they might feel super motivated because they get to do super specific work, and they're usually very skilled workers, and it's super flexible. Uh, you can also mark up the prices very high since you have to have a specialist and the customers are usually super satisfied because they get to customize their own thing. So disadvantages are that it's expensive, you have to hire these very skilled workers, it's very time consuming because it's so customized, they have to communicate all the time, and it's very labor intensive. So you won't have a machine doing it or anything like that. So the next one is batch production. So essentially you have you are producing groups of identical products in very, very large quantities. So batch is like a large quantity. But you have multiple different products that are made 
in large quantities. There isn't just one. That is important to keep in mind. So this one is more capital intensive rather than labor, labor intensive because you use machines and stuff like that. So uh, advantages. There is many, you can create economies of scale because you're making so many products that you can sell way more. Um, faster production, your customers have more choices. So the main limitations are that you need high levels of stock, so you might need storage or you might need to buy like storage units to keep stuff in because you make such large batches that they're not all going to disappear at once. Like in job where you make one specific product for one person, then you won't have to store it anywhere. And if there are machine issues, it can be very, very expensive to fix. So mass production is making um, basically standardized products, a huge, huge amount of standardized products. As I mentioned before, mass production is sort of an umbrella term. So they also talk a lot about flow production. Flow production is essentially mass production, except the product is moving in a flow. So instead of you moving around making the product, the product is moving around to each of the different stages. So there is a lot of factories where the products are on conveyor belts and they just move around. So that would be flow production. So advantages, uh, there is little maintenance. You don't need a lot of workers and you can also have unskilled workers because all they really have to do is press a button or two and you can also make large orders. The main disadvantages are that it is very expensive to set up because you have to buy all the machinery and it is also very inflexible and it's costly if the machines break down and it is demotivating for the employees because they don't have anything specific to do. So the last type is cellular production so or manufacturing. So essentially this is splitting the flow of production into self-contained groups that are responsible for each task or each unit. So you're essentially doing mass production except there are teams. You are working in teams. So the main advantages are that you can feel motivated because you can make decisions or like the individual employees have more responsibility and decisions to make. They also have to be highly skilled, which means that they probably enjoy what they're doing more than someone who's just like flicking a button. The quality should also be improved. The productivity should be improved because of the motivation. And you might reduce costs, but that is sort of debatable because you might also increase your costs because you have to get more skilled employees, except it might be less capital intensive or more depending on how you do it. So I forgot to mention the disadvantages, which was sort of stupid of me, but essentially some disadvantages are, so the disadvantages is it can be more time consuming and you also get a lower input than with mass production, or you might, okay? It depends how effective people are working, I guess. And it is, more flexible, but still not as flexible as something like job. Essentially, you just compare them all to each other and you will find disadvantages and advantages. So what are some of the implications of changing your production method? So for HR, some of the workers might have to be let go because if you're going from labor intensive to capital intensive, like as in your adding more machines, you might need less people, or maybe you had unskilled workers and now you need skilled workers, you might, might need to train them and such. So for HR, you have to think about those things. Now for marketing, essentially you might need to market your product differently because if it's customized, then you have to say um, you market it to a sort of more, the clientele might be more like fancy. Okay, this is not very businessy terms. I don't know how to explain that, but you probably know what I mean. That if it's like, oh, we customize our product to each single person, it's probably more expensive. Da 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 da. Meanwhile, if it's like mass production, uh, the product might be sold for less, and like those things. Then finance, you might need to have more stock, and you might need your budget to be higher or lower, or think about how you need to pay for machines or how to pay for skilled employees, essentially anything like that.
So when you think about what is appropriate for your business to use, you think about certain things. You think about your target market. As I said, fancy pants, you might want job uh, production because it's like customized and whatever the hell. Technology, knowing what technology exists is super important because it allows you to be more flexible and know that ah, if I have this type of machinery, I can make my products, which means I'll do mass production. But if you don't have that technology, you're screwed. That's the same sort of thing here where it says the availability of resources. So do you have people? Do you have machines? Do you have all of that? Government regulations. So essentially certain countries might have like emission, like waste emission regulations or recycling regulations. So it might not be appropriate to do mass production in those countries because they pollute more or anything like that. So that was pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me at Johanna Frenert on Instagram. I hope you learned something. Goodbye!